You boys be quiet down there! Back in the day, Cadacious was a really awesome place to live. But then some guy named Galagis showed up and raised the evil spirit Azatos from the dead. Or wherever. A young magician appeared and was able to stop Galagis and Azatos. He sealed both of them into eight magic books. Magic books? Hmm, I wonder what would happen if you actually tried to read one of those books. <laughs> like some kind of Encyclopedia Britannica of evil. Anyway, that magician who was able to seal them in the books became known as the Magician Lord, and the land was peaceful once again for many hundreds of years. Now Galagis has freed himself from the books and is trying to raise Azatos again. It's now up to a young man named Elta, a descendant of the Magician Lord, to collect the eight volumes and seal Galagis away once again. This is the story of Magician Lord, a launch title for the Neo Geo, and later a pack-in game for the Neo Geo Gold system. The game was released in 1990 by Alpha Denshi, later known as ADK. This is one of the first action platformers released for the system, and in fact one of the few ever released in the system's illustrious life. As a one-player only platformer, this game stands alone in the Neo Geo library. The game is also famously throw your controller at the wall difficult. In fact, depending on which version of the game you play, Magician Lord can be more akin to the games in the Ghouls and Ghosts series, perhaps experienced best as a console game rather than in an arcade, sending it apart from other Neo Geo titles. For this review, I am playing the game on my MVS cart, which has been modded using Gadget UK's two versions in one mod. In a nutshell, this mod allows you to switch between both the home and arcade versions of the game. There's a link to his video showing you how to do this mod in the notes below. Please check out his videos which give a lot of technical insight into the Neo Geo, and I want to give a thousand thanks to Gadget UK for sharing his useful mod. Now, you may be thinking, I don't need to do that mod, because my system already has a Unibios, which allows me to change at will between the different modes of the game. Well, Magician Lord is the one case in the entire Neo Geo library where you would be wrong. This is the only Neo Geo game that doesn't have both the home and arcade versions of the game in the same ROM. Who knows why they did this, but my theory is that being a very early title on the system, they were still trying to figure out how to handle the separate AES and MVS versions of the games. They hadn't yet gotten to the standard Neo Geo way of doing things. In fact, in the case of all other games on the system, game ROMs contain both the home and arcade versions of the game, hidden away, just waiting to be unlocked depending on which version of the system the game is being played on. Since the MBS system was released slightly ahead of the Neo Geo AES home rental system, perhaps they made the arcade version of Magician Lord first, and then later tweaked the game slightly for the home release, creating the distinct arcade and home program ROMs for the game. More on the differences between the two versions of the game in a moment. On my website, as a teenager in the late 90s, I said bluntly that I don't think Magician Lord is a good game. I liked the graphics, but took issue with the sound and controls. <laughs> now, before you come after me with pitchforks, I want to say right up front that I disagree strongly with my teenage self. Magician Lord is a very strong showing on the early Neo Geo, with awesome graphics, gameplay, and sound. How could I have gotten this game so wrong back in the late 90s? Let's go back to the beginning. My first experience with Magician Lord was back around 1992 on the TV show Nick Arcade. In addition to answering trivia questions, contestants would participate in what was called a video challenge, where they were challenged to 30 seconds of gameplay in real video games. Contestants got to choose between five different games on each show, and in one episode, one of these games was Magician Lord. I thought the graphics looked colorful, vivid, and sharp, so in that moment, I had to have it. Back then, I was just becoming aware of the Neo Geo, 
So when I first saw the game, I assumed it was for the Super Nintendo, a console that I was enamored with at the time. It wasn't long after seeing the show that I saw Magician Lord in a magazine, finding out that the game was actually for Neo Geo, much to the disappointment of my 12 year old self. This is how the game first came onto my radar, but the fact that the game was for the Neo Geo, a console that, to put it gently, was an aspirational system, <laughs> sealed my fate that I would not get to play the game until much later. I never visited an arcade that had the game. Magician Lord is distinguished by bright, colorful, detailed graphics, which really were eye-popping at the time. Tight, challenging gameplay, and a rocking soundtrack. Most of the game's music is made up of FM sound, produced by the Neo Geo's internal Yamaha YM2610 sound chip, with some ADPCM sound samples thrown in for color, like this sound. I love some nice farty bass to get my woofers going. Anyway, I think that back in the late 90s, I wasn't a big fan of the Neo Geo's FM sound. I wanted my Neo Geo games to sound newer and not like Sega Genesis games. Today my opinion is exactly the opposite. I'd rather listen to something composed specifically for the original synthesizer than something simply recorded and digitized. I can really appreciate what ADK was able to do with the Neo Geo sound chip in this game. The game is divided into 8 stages. 8 books, 8 stages, hmm, makes sense. Though the settings of the stages vary widely, the background music does start being reused in the later sections of the game. This doesn't go on long enough to reuse all of the main BGMs from the game, but enough so that the first couple of stage BGMs do get repeated. This repetition of music doesn't help the situation any, as the game becomes more demanding on the player. Please turn me off. Please turn me off. You have unlimited continues, even in home mode, unlike most Neo Geo games. You will need these unlimited continues, considering the high difficulty and trial and error of the game. Oh, for crap's sake! Go! No. Hmm... A memory card is also highly recommended to be able to save and pick your game back up later as you work through the later levels of the game. In home mode, it is doubtful that you will be able to get through the whole game in one shot until you have mastered it. You can pick up different elements throughout the game, which transform Elta into Shinobi, a quick ninja-like character who has a long-range attack and a high jump, Poseidon, a character with water-based attacks, Raijin, an electricity-based character who surrounds himself with lightning when he attacks, a Samurai, a slow character that has a useful attack that covers a good amount of screen real estate, Waterman, another water-based character, and Dragon Warrior, a monster that attacks by spitting a short but powerful fire attack. The combination of elements you collect determines which character Elta will transform into. Get hit enough times and these transformations are over, often very quickly unless you're skilled at the game. As you get better at the game, the different available characters add to the strategy of certain stage segments and bosses. Except for the early stages of the game, each stage has branching paths, determined by which doors you choose. Some of these doors contain bonuses, which will make them well worth your time exploring, others will bring you closer to the end of the stage, while others can sometimes be more or less dead ends. Familiarizing yourself with the layout of the stages and choosing the best path is key to mastering the game. In fact, stage 5 here, the underground passage of terror, has a part where the floors will repeat infinitely, a la Zelda's Lost Woods, until you choose the right ladder, so you'll have to memorize the order of ladders to take. At the end of each stage you will fight a mini-boss. 
After defeating the mini-boss, you will be taunted with a short speech from Galagees. What imprudent you human being. Face your trial by God. These speech sequences may seem somewhat laughable today, but keep in mind this amount of speech on a cartridge-based game was very impressive back in 1990. That power is powerless And a fun fact that might surprise you? When playing the game in Japanese, Galagis' speeches are actually voiced in Japanese rather than English, meaning that the game actually contains two sets of voice tracks for Galagis after each stage, a feat quite amazing back in the day on a 46 megabit game. Of course, 46 megs was thought to be huge when the Neo Geo was new, but compared with the Neo Geo's wider library, 46 megs is actually not large. After Galaji speaks, you will be treated to the main boss of each stage. The attack patterns and amazing artwork make these bosses highlights of the game, but they are generally one of the easier parts to contend with, since you have unlimited tries until you learn the boss's patterns and defeat them. It's after defeating each of these bosses that Elka will recover one of the eight books needed to seal Galagees back away again. That's Magician Lord in a nutshell, rinse and repeat, with each stage more difficult than the last. The final stage is a boss rush, which asks you to fight all of the game's mini-bosses, plus the final boss of the game in one continue. In order to beat this stage, you will need to master all of the mini-bosses. Some of the stages can become brutally punishing, which is where I think Ghouls and Ghosts becomes an apt comparison. Why do I think Magician Lord is like Ghouls and Ghosts? Well, here's the main reason. Butter nuts. Um, Butternut Squash? Speaking of Ghouls and Ghosts, here's a tip for that series. Try to get the dagger. When playing the home version, be ready to try and retry until you get it right. With such a small life bar, there is very little room for error. You will get three lives per continue. In the home cartridge, each time you die, you will be sent back either to the beginning of the stage or the last door you entered. These checkpoints are few and far between, and if you lose all three lives, you will be sent back to the beginning of the stage. In the home version at least, you do get a longer health bar, beginning with three hits instead of two. The arcade MBS version, however, is a far different experience. In the MBS cart, Elta will always regenerate in the last spot where you died. Even if you continue, you will respawn in your last position, rather than being sent back to the beginning of the stage. Even if you die in the middle of a boss battle, the damage to the boss will be retained in your next life. In this way, the arcade allows you to simply credit feed your way through the game. This of course makes sense in an arcade setting, where you're forced to pay real money for each attempt, but playing the arcade mode at home can lessen the impact of this game. This arcade mode is what I was reviewing back in the late 90s. I had just gotten my first consoleized MBS, and had never gotten around to picking up a copy for AES. I think that the ability to blaze through the game with little consequence for my mistakes made the game forgettable. I didn't bother to go back and master it at the time. Back then, I wasn't even aware that there were two versions of the game. How could I have even known? In the late 90s, it was widely known among Neo Geo fans that the games contained both the home and arcade modes for the game, but few knew that Magician Lord was the exception, with two versions. The home version of the game also includes an intro story sequence, which was cut from the arcade version of the game. I actually quite like the story, music, and art featured in this intro. It's a shame I wasn't able to see it back when I reviewed the game. It really provides needed context. Because the art for the intro is in the original MVS ROM, some of it being reused in the game's ending, this intro sequence was actually cut from the MVS version, not later created and added for the home. It's easy to see why. At a minute and 20 seconds, the intro runs a little long for something a player would be expected to watch after inserting money into the machine. The how to play sequence already takes up enough time. This is actually the only Neo Geo game that has much of an intro after starting the game. Most later Neo Geo games would have put this story sequence during the attract mode of the game. 
Perhaps ADK didn't think this intro was eye-catching enough to show during the attract mode, or that it was simply too long. Oh, one last thing regarding the two versions of the game. It seems that official AES cartridges of Magician Lord were later produced containing the MBS version of the game. This AES cart containing the MBS version seems to be the less common version. Who knows if this was done because they just had spare program ROMs from the arcade lying around, or if the decision was made because the game was considered too difficult. At any rate, I think that's a shame, because in my opinion, the home mode with the checkpoints is the superior way to play the game. I say this as someone who's experienced it both ways. After it became widely known in the Neo Geo community that two distinct versions existed, I became determined to obtain and complete the home version of the game. To me, finishing Magician Lord was a sort of Neo Geo rite of passage, and credit feeding the arcade version obviously didn't count. If your system has a Unibios, you can unlock new difficulty settings that were not originally available to Neo Geo AES owners. The AES version running on a stock system offers no difficulty or option settings of any kind. Just game start and memory card save and load. However, with the Unibios, you can access the MBS's soft dip settings. This will allow you to change the game difficulty as well as the number of lives. It could prove useful for practicing or for an added challenge. However, I do recommend keeping the standard AES difficulty as your main goal. Keep in mind that if you have the MBS cart, playing the game in home mode will not give you the home version of the game, and vice versa. It will give you home options, such as the pause button, but the game difficulty will still be the same as the MBS version, and you will respawn wherever you last died. Since my MBS cart has both the home and arcade modes, I use the arcade mode for practice, figuring out which routes to take through the level before switching back to the home mode. I also recommend using a turbo controller for this game. All of the video captured for this review was done with a Neo Geo Hori fighting stick, with the A button turbo switched on. This makes it easier to fight the game's enemies without killing your hand. Magician Lord was a tour de force on the Neo Geo, showing off what the system was capable of graphically and musically. It offered rock solid gameplay and beautiful graphics. In short, it was a joy to play and a worthy challenge to complete. Why then was I so harsh on such a great game back in my earlier years? Well, I think it had everything to do with the time when I was playing it. Keep in mind that in the late 90s, the Neo Geo was still considered alive. The original SNK was still around, and new games were still slowly being released. Although the Neo Geo was released around the same time as the Mega Drive, PC Engine, and SNES, it later became a peer to the fifth generation of consoles, with many Neo Geo games being ported to the PS1 and Sega Saturn. In the late 90s, when buying a used Neo Geo or Neo Geo CD, I expected gameplay and graphics that would rival the PS1, Saturn, and N64. Minus the polygons, of course. In that late 90s context, Magician Lord, with its early 90s aesthetic and gameplay, seemed much more like a relic than a fulfillment of the Neo Geo's promise of a 2D powerhouse. We were still seeing games the likes of Blazing Star, The Last Blade 2, and Metal Slug 2 being released at the time when I wrote that review. I had always known about Magician Lord growing up, but when I finally did get a chance to play it for myself, it was anticlimactic. The amazing graphics of 1990 had lost their luster. It's funny that now, much later in 2017, I am much more able to see the greatness of Magician Lord. For better or for worse, the entire Neo Geo system is now considered retro, a loaded term, I know. None of the library is trying to be contemporary with the PS4 or Xbox One. It's easier to put the games in context and see the individual Neo Geo games as a product of the times they were made in, rather than expecting them to measure up to the later games on the system. And even when we do that now, Magician Lord comes out favorably with awesome graphics, sound, and gameplay packed into a tight 46 megabit package. Now let's grab the Neo Geo CD version of Magician Lord, released in 1994, and see how that turned out. Here we go, I just want to give you a quick feel for what's on the disc here. Wow, the music sounds slightly different from the cartridge. 
It's like the cartridge music, but somewhat enhanced with new mixing and slightly different instruments playing the melodies. It's as if they managed to get the original music playing on a slightly different sound chip than the Neo Geos. Let's do a quick comparison of the CD and cartridge music so that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, I'll just start the game now. It's loading. I'm using the regular top loader Neo Geo CD today. If I were using the faster CDZ, it would probably be loading a little faster. But the CDZ wasn't around when this game was released, so let's just not use it today. So far, so good. This isn't any different than the cartridge version. And it's good to see that the intro is here. Unfortunately, they've gone with the MBS version of the game for the Neo Geo CD release, meaning your character will respawn directly where you died, and any boss damage will carry over. Actually, they've gone one step further than that. Not only does the CD use the easier MBS rules, it also gives you one extra box of life. The easier version was probably chosen for the same reason most Neo Geo CD games tend to have unlimited continues while their AES counterparts do not. The thinking seems to have been that Neo Geo CD owners didn't want to be hassled with the added challenge of limited continues, and in this case being sent back to the checkpoints. I think this is really a shame because again, the version that sends you back really is the superior way to appreciate the game. The CD version just seems to be the MVS version running on a lower difficulty than the default on the cartridge. Not only can you tell from the longer life bar, but also I noticed this boss runs slower on the CD version. Unfortunately, the CD version has no difficulty options. Unless you have the Unibios for the Neo Geo CD, you're stuck with these settings. Galagis' speeches are now on CD audio tracks, but you don't get any improvement to the audio quality. I'm deaf and just to die. The whole game is loaded in one shot, making this game load just as fast as the cartridge, after the initial load of course. For that reason, there really aren't any compromises when playing this on the Neo Geo CD as opposed to the cartridge. However, the home cart was common and is still relatively cheap as Neo Geo games go, even today. In fact, as a cost-saving alternative, the Neo Geo CD version doesn't offer any benefits, since the CD version actually costs more than the home cart. This is also one of the rare games where the MBS version tends to be more expensive than the home version. That's because the AES version is one of the more common games. Indeed, it was a pack-in game at one point, while the game was not as common in arcades. For that reason, I was a bit wary of modding my MBS cart, especially with flash carts now available. Magician Lord was so well regarded that a sequel was originally planned for the Neo Geo in 1995. This project was later moved to the Neo Geo Pocket Color in 1998, where it became simply known as Magician Lord, and then cancelled shortly after that. An alpha version of the Neo Geo Pocket Color game was discovered in 2012 by GameCult.com, which is what you're seeing here. It's not known whether the alpha version has sound, since there is no sound in the videos posted, the game is said to have a more Metroidvania style, perhaps better suited to the portable format. 
It's considered a huge shame by the Neo Geo community that this game never saw the light of day, and I think it's also a shame that the unearthed alpha version has not been made public. Magician Lord deserved a proper sequel. Magician Lord still stands as a unique and engaging title in the Neo Geo's library. It has a more home console style, which captures the feel of the early days of Neo Geo as a home system, provided you play the home version. This ghouls and ghosts style gameplay betrays the arcade pedigree of the console the game is on. And it's as annoying as hell. Ouch. It's also a true classic, owing some of that to its position as a Neo Geo launch title, but also in its own right. You owe it to yourself to play and finish Magician Lord at some point if you haven't. Thanks for watching. Next time I'll be reviewing NGH006, Riding Hero. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to Basement Brothers for more Neo Geo reviews coming your way.